over 2020 and 2021, fully charged, produced its first electric van series. But nothing stays static in the world of electric vehicles and nowhere more so than in electric vans. So I'm back with my friend Paul Kirby to talk about electric vans on the market today and what's coming up in the future. Welcome to Fully Charged. Fully Charged Live is back and bigger than ever. Get your tickets now to the world's number one electric vehicle and clean energy live show, featuring all manner of electric vehicles, tons of test drives, live theater sessions, interactive home energy experiences, and so much more. See you there. So Paul, you know, you, you, we see year on year an increasing number of electric cars on the road and an increasing number of, of, of choice of electric cars, of options you can buy. Is that being reflected similarly with, with vans? Well, I'm pleased to say that the, the van market is catching up, yes. And at the end of 2020, there was about five or six vehicles, vans available. But by the end of 2021, there was over 20 vehicles available to market 76 variants. We'd seen a 146% increase in the actual numbers bought. That was a move from 5,000 to 12,800 thereabouts. So there has been a general growth in the market, which is great news. As far as the variety of vans out there, what sort of changes have we seen to that? The big entrant last year was um, was Vauxhall or the Stellantis group as a whole. But if you focus just on the Vauxhall Vivaro, there was um, over 2,700 of those uh, registered last year, mainly to the larger corporate customers, um, less so to the smaller one-man band, butcher, baker, candlestick maker kind of market. Um, but we also saw a significant number of Mercedes-Benz, uh, both the, the Sprinter and the Vito sold, and also Maxus, this sort of Chinese brand that has been sort of just quietly going about its business. And we're seeing both to big corporate and to the smaller market there, which is really great news. And so there's a greater variety on offer. I think manufacturers are taking it more seriously now. And there's certainly, you know, battery ranges and uh, suitability, uh, you know, across the piece, which is great to see. And with that increased kind of choices and increased number of companies coming into the market, is that increased competition is, is that helping with better performance and lower prices I mean I'd like to think so you know the um, the, the fact that these new uh, pretenders are coming into this into the market I think is challenging the the established OEMs to step up um, you know we, we still haven't seen Ford yet in the market with a, a truly electric vehicle so I think these guys getting you know a step ahead of them is great news because that will mean that you know hopefully prices will come down hopefully technology will increase and more investment in that space as we you know see across the market this drive to go zero emission on uh, our commercial vehicle transport If I want to go out and buy an electric van today, yeah. and just to give um, some of our viewers a bit of context, yeah. where it's January 2022 that we're yeah. sat here now. So I want to go and buy a, a van today. What are my options? So uh, let's split it up into three sectors, small, medium, and large. Yeah, just you pretend you're speaking to me, because you are. <laughs> let's keep it simple. Keep it simple. So in the small van sector, so we've seen a lot of change, and we are seeing a lot of change there. Um, but today, if you wanted to go and buy a small van, you really have only got a choice of a, a couple. You can get the, uh, the Stellantis brand again. That's the Vauxhall, the Citroen, the uh, Peugeot. Those three have been out with their small van, the Combo, or the Belinga, or the Partner. So that's one one small van that's available because the Kangoo and the Nissan EMV 200 which we would have, have been the mainstay of the market yeah, for the last can't, 10 years. Kangoo was one of like it was the backbone it was this sort of you know, Nissan Leaf if, or, you know or yeah. Renault Zoe of, of the van market. That has, has come to the end of its life and, and it was needing an upgrade and there was lots of reasons why that that should happen and it's good that it is happening but at the moment there's that you can't buy that van um, we will talk about the new one later but um, there's that and then there's the Zoe van um, and really in in the small van sector there's not really a lot else but that's that's one of the interesting worth noting is that it may appear there's put four or five vans in the small van but actually 
three is it's also invited the zoo the rhino zoe is a separate, separate yeah. and then you've got the the blingo and the the partner but also actually toyota uh, have also yeah. invested in in the same vehicle but they're not part of the stellantis group but they've also brought the pro a city which is the blingo the partner and the um the combo so apart from a change of barge and maybe a little yeah. bit of cosmetics it's pretty much the same van pretty much the same van okay. yeah if i need to a bit bigger so th that's the medium van sector really um this has been led by the vivaro but uh, you've got the dispatch and the expert as well in that um in that space uh but you've also got the toyota pro ace and again not part of the stantis group but they've bought it you've also got the veto which did very well at the back end of last year and also the abt transporter which was sold last year but has come to an end as well so there's a, a number of vehicles in that mix you've got the maxus e deliver 3 which sort of just in the bottom end size wise of the medium van sector so typically they can wet, you know carry about a ton and they've got usually got the DC charging and all that good stuff so that market has seen some real growth and we will see some more vehicles but it's the Vivaro and we'll hear a little bit more about the Vito later um, in terms of development and the Maxxis e Deliver 3 which you know broadly gives you that that medium van sector Okay, finally then, uh, we're talking about current vans. Yeah. If we want to go larger still to the big vans, where, where are we now? Well, so we, we had the Renault Master way back then, but now we, we really do have a good number of large electric vans on the market. So the Sprinter is now available. We've also got uh, the MAN TGE, which doesn't sell great numbers, but it, it's available. But also we've got Movano and um, the, the larger of the Stellantis group, including the Fiat e Ducato. And of course, we've got the Maxxis e Deliver 9, which we'll we'll see that large van sector it is more expensive it's and you know the total cost of ownership is a bit more of a challenge but we have seen some real growth in that sector because of big parcel companies really going for it and uh, you know investing in that sector so there's more choice available but it's still a bit at the pricey end so what does the future hold move the next what six to twelve months and how far we can confidently forecast yeah. but again what models are we seeing coming on are we current models improving or prices yeah. coming down so in, in the small sector we, we talked about that gap with the nissan mm. uh, and the uh, and the the renault the kangoo so Nissan and Renault are very closely aligned. They, they're almost the, the same brand, and I, I don't know what the level of connection is in, in terms of financials, but um, they, uh, they're they bringing out the Kangoo and the Townstar, but that's also being sold to Mercedes-Benz as a e sedan as well. So again, we're seeing this brand adoption because actually the cost of investment to see these vehicles come to life is much, much higher, um, especially when you're developing completely new technology from the ground up. The Nissan Townstar, the Renault, Kangoo and the Mercedes e Citan will all see this year and we'll see them sort of middle of the year. Some people might roll their eyes at the fact that oh, these companies are just basically relabeling the same van and pushing it out under a different barge. Yeah. Does that have a benefit for consumers in the sense that that makes the van cheaper to produce for all these companies and therefore there's a there's a savings we, we passed on to so th us? There's two things. So yes, there's definitely that, that sort of volume and which will drive the price, price down. And But also it forces manufacturers manufacturers to think about how they will differentiate their brands so some brands go with increased warranty so you're getting more security for a longer period of time some develop their in-life services so that when the vehicle breaks down it gets back on the road quicker so what the what any kind of competition does is drive excellence and that in the commercial vehicle world is super important because you never want your van to be off the road so whether it's warranty whether it's increased service levels whether it's better customer service whatever Whatever it is, brands need to differentiate, so it, it focuses their mind, hopefully. Uh, small vans, so medium vans, where, where are we seeing some development there? One medium-sized van that is has been sort of on the, on the lips of many people for many years, and even Fully Charged covered it many years ago before it was talked about being a van, which is the ID Buzz. Yes, so I think, I think Robert and Johnny did an episode like three, four years ago on um, that. I've watched it because that I, th I thought, actually, this is the new, you know, the new v camper. VW Camper. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, nothing. Nothing. no, nothing, and um, and that will the, it will come. The the California, as they call it, will come, um, and probably you know after the 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 ID Buzz, which is going to be their uh, passenger carrying vehicle, yeah. and then the ID Buzz Cargo, which is going to be the van, which is the one, of course, I get excited about. Um, we don't know how 
much range it's going to have, how big the battery is, but we are promised a world premiere launch in March or, or so of this year. So we'll get all the information and details then. Long awaited. And also, so the Stellantis brand are adding uh, the Fiat Scudo, so it'll add a, another version of that, that medium sized van. So there'll be five vans that are the same. Yeah. So they'll have a 50 kilowatt, a 75 kilowatt, and they'll have, but they'll have different options and different service offerings. So hopefully that will, you know, stimulate the market in that way. And, and you know, potentially the volume helps bring the price down as we, we talked about. And that'll be similar to the, the Vivaro and... Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's broadly the same. It'll have a different front grille, different, some different options available, different wheels, maybe a color or two that might, okay. might, be, might stand out. Remember the Vito that you did the test on? Yes. Uh, and we, we noted that it was seven kilowatts uh, in terms of charging and it had relatively small battery and didn't go very far. Yeah, compared to the Vivaro. Absolutely. It was, mm. Yeah. But the great news is Mercedes are bringing out an upgraded version. So they've, they've put that little slot in the corner. We're going to see 80 kilowatt DC charging uh, with up to 11 kilowatt uh, AC charging, which is a distinct improvement on the previous variant. We're going to have a 66 kilowatt hour battery, which will go 162 miles. This is going to meet a need in the marketplace. And that's an exciting announcement for Mercedes because I think them stepping into the game is going to be really good news for the whole market. Uh, and then finally, the large vans. The large van will, so we've said this a few times, arrival will arrive. You know, every year we've been hopeful that we'll see this ground up electric vehicle arrive. Um, and I've driven it now. So I've, I've actually had a little drive around the car park in a pre-production model. Um, we'll see some more pre-production models come out for testing and that sort of thing this year. And then we're assured that Q3 this year, they will begin production. The production of that vehicle. And can I just clarify this? This is not the same van that that's the sort of the UPS the yes, big it is. it is okay yeah it is that van so the the, the, the big deal is with UPS yeah. but there is a number of other customers lining up now so any any, any other sort of more standard well, uh, companies bringing in big vans so you? about 18 months ago I was scathing about the fact that Ford announced that they're going to launch this vehicle in April of 2022 but they're actually going to do it um, and arguably they've done a better job than other brands in doing uh, doing the job and getting it to yeah. market and so uh, i'm very excited to see the ford transit come it's going to have a decent range they claim 196 uh, it's coming from a 75 kilowatt hour or 67 kilowatt hour uh, battery it feels like a bit of a stretch, but let's let's see it. They're they're in customer trials at the minute, and um, you know that with some big companies like DHL and Tesco and um, Transport for London, there's there's a number of trials going on as we speak. So you know, come April, we'll see the first customer deliveries, and we'll probably see well over five thousand of those vehicles hit the market this year. And I know that there's a lot of orders already in with other uh, end user customers. So I'm excited to see that because it will make a big difference, and again, it's going to stimulate competition from the likes of Mercedes and, and Maxus and, and all of the other brands will all kind of go, oh damn, the transit's here now. And also it will force arrival as well, I think, you know, to actually get something onto yeah. the market because otherwise, you know, they've got real, real trouble. Now, amongst those sort of three sized vans we're speaking about, I know that there are some slightly left field vans which are probably come into market so what we're also seeing is um, a lot of innovation in this space I mean arrival have driven yeah. that and we, we also look to Rivian of course so Rivian um, not here yet in the UK but it's suggested that they're eyeing up a, a big plot of land in Somerset which is great news to stick a factory which will probably produce batteries and probably produce maybe a pickup maybe the van as well um, but we know that there's a hundred thousand of those Rivian vans ordered by Amazon so so we know that there's a lot of Amazon money in that business so I'm hopeful that we'll see that van come in time but we've also seen some other importers of, um, of, of Chinese product like the Centro product or there's the Orca um, which is a, a medium-sized van uh, very configurable but also very cost effective as well so dfsk are coming to market under innovation automotive and so they're bringing sort of small to medium vans with chassis cab options which are going to give the market a lot of choice um, it's going to make us think how do we make this work because 
it's going to meet the need of the public sector, it's going to meet the need of some of the sort of slightly left field variants and options that are available. There's a lot of change going on in the market and we've got to think differently. My, my adage at the moment is like, treat it like ABC, a blank canvas. You know, when we're moving to this new way of doing things, let's consider all these new options that are coming to market um, and, and have a good look around and, and see what, what's going on because it, it could be really quite exciting. Because these new options you're speaking about, these are not the traditional vans that have been kind of effectively converted to electric, like the Transit, the Vivaro, the, yeah. or the, the Vito. These are, these are vans that have been designed from day one yeah. to be electric all the, way, all the way up. Yeah, so there's a, there's a great British company, um, a company called JLC. They're already importing Chinese electric vehicles. Um, but they're also considering how they will build something from scratch as an electric vehicle for the market. So they're learning from all the technology that they've got around them and coming to market with something that they believe is going to be designed and fit for purpose for, for our market. So that's exciting as well because it's driving innovation. The DFSK or Innovation Automotive brand coming to market with Chinese product but you know, it's, it's going to be cost effective, it's going to meet the needs of, of a real sector of the market. And so, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. And what, and what advantages or disadvantages are you seeing with a van that's been designed from day one as an electric vehicle versus something like is it the Transit, the Vivaro, the Vito, mm. which is effectively a sort of conversion of a, of yeah. a, of a, of a diesel van? Mm. What's the differences then? There is very few fully ground up electric vans on the market uh, at the moment. There's only so much you can do. You've got four wheels, yeah. you've got a place to put the batteries which is generally under the floor. You're not going to change that too much. I think it's uh, to a degree overrated. When you look at the yeah. arrival vehicle, it is a bit more compact. They're getting better use of space and I think that will be the, the thing that we'll see. Better use of space, um, but I don't think the tremendous advantage is because I think a lot of the things are the same. Yeah. You know, they're putting the batteries in the place where you would put the battery, you know, between the wheels. Um, it will allow the wheels to go out and be a bit more stable. You perhaps get a bit, a bit pe better payload, but it's not dramatic. I don't think the changes are that dramatic. So converting an, an old diesel or whatever is fine. I've now got a rough idea of, of, of what's out there, what my options are now and maybe over the next uh, six, 12 months. I want to buy a van. Yeah. What should I be thinking about? What should be my sort of right? This is my criteria, my requirement for the van that's going to work best for me. Well, I, I think you summed it up in that last bit. What it will work best for you? Because so everybody is different in their need. So your van has to be fit for purpose for you. It has to be able to carry what you need to carry. So you might need to rethink that. And, and this is a great opportunity to rethink that. Some companies are completely stripping back what they've always done and are re-evaluating how, how might they do it differently. Look at what you need. What do I need to carry? So it might be size, it might be weight, um, and, and work out what gives you the right payload and the right space. And that, sorry to interrupt you, but that's something worth considering, because when I first start looking at vans, it seems to really obvious now, mm -hmm. but at the time you think a bigger battery, mm. more power, I can carry more. Yeah. But it's not, because the bigger battery weighs more, yeah. so actually your weight limit goes down. So actually, the smaller battery can carry a bit more. So I'm, I'm proud of you. Because you, 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 you got the difference right. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's the bottom line. So the, the uh, 50 kilowatt can carry 1,200 kilos yeah. and, and the 75 kilowatt can carry 1,000 kilos. So, but it's the 200 kilo difference that we, we uh, sacrifice for the increased range. Well, if I only do 80 miles a day, what do I want with a battery that will take me 205 miles? It, that, that's immaterial. I actually want the weight. But what I also don't want is the added expense of the extra battery. So I'm, I want to use as much of the battery as I can without needing too much. So it's about getting that balance right. And the same with space, you know, because the bigger the, the vehicle, the less efficient it's going to be because it's, you know, it's about that wind resistance, isn't it? If, it, if it's going to be small and narrow, it's going to go through the wind a bit better and it will be more efficient. So efficiency is important. The, uh, the charging speeds are really important. So looking at, you know, if I'm doing 300 miles a day and I'm willing to, you know, charge as I'm out, then 
you know, having a fast, a, D, a fast DC charging port is going to be really important to you. So it's about making all of those sort of informed decisions, understanding each vehicle, how fast it charges, how big the battery is, how far it will go, what can I get in it. So you're going to pay a lot of money. Uh, you want to make sure that you get best value out of that money. So you know, matching your requirements to the vehicle make it fit for purpose but also increase your return on investment. But when it comes to buying an electric van it's not as simple as just thinking about the van itself. You have to also consider how and where and when I suppose you're going to mm -hmm. charge the vehicle. But companies really must think about this before they go into getting a, a, you know an electric van. We really need to devote some time to this I reckon. So what we'll do is we'll do a second episode purely on the logistics of charging uh, and things to consider when you're looking at a, a commercial electric van. Absolutely and then that will help people make a really good decision about the van that they need. So there we have it, a quick summary of where we're at and where we're going with electric vans. Thanks to Paul for all his advice and you can join me and Paul on episode two of this series to look at logistics and the science behind uh, charging your electric commercial vehicle. So if you want to see more about electric vans then stay tuned to Fully Charged Plus in the future. Apart from that, as always, if you have been, thanks for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that episode, you're going to love this one. And this one, too, is very relevant to the topic. And also, if you want to subscribe to Fully Charged, which is a wonderful thing to do, really helps us, cost you nothing, you just click up there. It's really simple. And if you do want to support us a little bit more, you can have a look at the Patreon link. That's up there. Thank you.